Okay, so let's summarize. So we've now learned the basics of how a CPU is constructed. We started at the transistor level uh, with these low level logic gates and we slowly built those up through various layers of abstraction to make uh, circuits that were ever more complex until we got to the point where we could put them all together to form a CPU. Uh, and then today we've also talked about how pipelining can provide some basic parallelism uh, in the form of running multiple instructions at the same time. Although, of course, there are limitations to uh, how much this can help. Uh, and although those limitations exist, this is certainly uh, a technique that has proven its power and nearly every chip uh, that's manufactured these days has some form of instruction level parallelism. Okay, so this is uh, about as far as we're going to go uh, aside in respect to CPU architecture anyway. Uh, we'll talk about the specifics of the Y86 architecture next time, um, but I did want to just point out that uh, there is a lot more that we could talk about uh, with respect to CPU uh, design in general. Uh, we won't be closely studying uh, any of those specifics. Uh, if you're interested, the details are in the textbook, and the textbook also talks fairly extensively about pipelining, and that's in section uh, 4.5. Uh, if you are really interested in this stuff, if this is something that kind of really sparks your interest, uh, I would uh, encourage you to plan to take CS456 as your advanced systems elective. So this course is computer architecture and it dives into far more detail about the things that we've been studying so far in this module. So uh, I'll highlight the one key course objective there at the very top, which is summarize the construction of a pipeline processor from low level building blocks. So we've done that at a very high level in this class. Uh, but in 456, you would have the opportunity to dive much deeper uh, and to actually prototype some uh, hardware designs using something called an FPGA. So again, if this is interesting, I would encourage you to uh, consider taking that as your advanced systems elective. All right, so what are some of the lessons that we've learned? I just wanted to summarize some of the big themes that we've seen through this module and that we'll continue to see throughout the rest of the course. So computers aren't human, of course. They are these very complex machines. These uh, complex machines require extremely precise inputs. Uh, if everything's not exactly right, then uh, the whole thing comes falling down. Uh, and with that comes the fact that the output is sometimes difficult to interpret. And so well, this is why we as humans interacting with the system need to very, be very, very conservative with what we give to the computer in terms of input. We need to be very careful that it, uh, uh, it adheres exactly to the specification, uh, for instance, in program encodings and things like that. Uh, and we, do, we need to have uh, a level of flexibility in interpreting the output of a program and we need to be able to um, understand what's going on even when it's not immediately apparent what's going on. Another lesson is that of abstraction. So abstraction really helps to manage the complexity of a system. If you had to design an entire system at the logic gate level, uh, it would just be a non-starter now. You wanna design things at the larger level and reuse components that you uh, built uh, already. Systems design involves trade-offs. So for instance, um, uh, you could look at the complexity of an instruction set. So uh, x86 is a very uh, complex instruction set. Uh, and what that means is that compilers can emit very efficient code. Um, but it also means that it's difficult to understand. And so we'll be working with y86 because it's simpler. And uh, it'll be slower because there are some things that you'll have to do with more than one instruction, for instance. Um, that you could do with one instruction in x86. But the, um, the overall simplicity uh, is advantageous, and so that's why we're going to make that trade-off. Uh, we saw another trade-off today with throughput versus latency, um, where in, in order to get a better throughput, we might introduce purposefully some extra latency into the system. And then finally, of course, the details matter a whole lot. There are so many ways for things to fail when you're working at the systems level. Um, and only a few ways to succeed. Uh, and so skill and dedication is really required in order to uh, succeed in this area. Okay, so uh, that sort of wraps up our discussion of CPU architecture. Uh, we will spend a little bit of time, as I mentioned, studying Y86 architecture in sp uh, specifically, and that's because we're asking you to code the Y86 architecture uh, in an interpreter in uh, project four. Uh, and then we'll also, and then we'll wrap up this module by talking a little bit about memory, which we haven't really talked a whole lot about yet. 
Um, we've talked a little bit about registers, but not a whole lot about memory yet. So we'll pick up that topic uh, as well as caching, and that'll round out this module four uh, and take us into the final module of the class, which is operating systems, where we'll start to learn how the hardware and the software, the user level software, interact with each other via the systems uh, level uh, software.